Module 4, Chapter 2.4, Absolute Value Functions, Graphs, Equations, Inequalities, and Applications. The absolute value is the distance a number is from zero on a number line. The absolute value of a real number is never negative. It's always greater than or equal to zero. And it's simply the number part ignoring the sign. We denote absolute value by two vertical bars. Recall, if f of x is written as the absolute value of x, that is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero, or negative x if x is less than zero. Use this concept to define the absolute value of a function. The absolute value of f of x is equal to f of x if the function is greater than or equal to zero, or the opposite of that function if f of x is less than zero, which means if the function is positive, then it stays positive. But if the function is negative, then we take the opposite of it to make it positive. Now, in terms of your calculator, we will use the command abs of x, which you can find on your calculator by pressing the math menu and then sliding over to numbers. To graph the function y equals f of x, the graph is the same as y equals f of x for values of f of x that are non-negative and they are reflected across the x-axis for those that are negative. The domain of f, of the absolute value of f, is the same as the domain of f, while the range of the absolute value of f will be a subset of the range of f. What that means is the domain stays the same, but the range will just take the portion of the range that's above the x-axis. So if we wanted to graph f of x equals x to the third, and use that to do y equals the absolute value of f of x. If you'll remember when we did our basic function of the cubic function, if we wanted to go through and pick some points, let's do x, let's do f of x. Then we're going to add a column on here, the absolute value of f of x. So Let's just pick a couple of numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. If we did negative 2 cubed, that would be negative 8. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 0 cubed is 0. 1 cubed is 1. And 2 cubed is 8. And that graph looks like, you know, we've got this one, we've got this one, we've got this one, we've got this one. Then we've got one up here. So our basic f of x equals x cubed graph goes like this. Well, if we're doing the f absolute value of f of x, these numbers over here, the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 0, 1, and 8 are just 0, 1, and 8. So what that does is that takes this portion of the graph, which is down below the x-axis, and it moves it back up here. So if we reflect that one, that's 1, 1. This one would be 2, 8. So it's going to move this portion of the graph back up, which means we, whoops, which means we would not need the bottom part. Same thing for this linear function, f of x equals 2x minus 5. Now remember, on this one, we could plug points, or we could just look at it and say, hey, this is linear slope is 2, y-intercept is negative 5, so it's going to cross the y-axis at negative 5. Slope is 2, means we're going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. I was just doing enough to get us across the x-axis. So that graph is going to look like this, but the absolute value graph would come down, and instead of going down here, it's going to reflect those points back up. This was the ordered pair 2, negative 1. 
So we're going to go over to two, positive one. And this graph is going to take off back up there. And on the absolute value graph, we're never going to have anything below the x-axis. Okay, what about that one? Can you sort of look at y equals the, I mean, x minus 4 squared minus 3? That is a translation of the x squared graph. So what we do is we start over and we say, well, y equals x squared looks like this. x squared, x minus 4 squared means we're moving over to 4. And then we put our parabola on there. And then minus 3 means we drop down 3. So this, this red graph that I'm coloring white, this is our y, equal, y equals x minus 4 squared minus 3. Now, to do the absolute value, we're going to take all these points that are down below the x-axis. If this one is 4, negative 3, we're going to bump it up here to 4, 3. So now we don't have any part of the graph down here. Now, if you want to use your calculator, remember we can just come in here and say y equals math, slide to number, there's absolute value of, now I'm going to, because there's parentheses, whoops, because there were parentheses over there, I'm going to go ahead and open another set, x minus 4 squared minus 3, and then close the parentheses for the whole thing, graph, and we get the same graph. Now we're supposed to give the domain and the range. Well, the domain, if you'll notice, the graph goes all the way left, all the way right. So the domain would be all real numbers. The range, because there is no part down below the x-axis, then the range would be from 0, which is a bracket, up to infinity. Now. Use the graph of y equals f of x to sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value of f of x. Then give the domain and the range. Well, remember, as long as your graph is above the x-axis on f, then it's going to be above the graph, above the x-axis on absolute value. This one, we're going to bring it up above the x-axis. So if this was 1, negative 3, we're going to go to 1, 3. So we've got that little piece, and then negative 2, 0 is a horizontal line. So we're going to come back here to 2, 0, close that one up, and then we're going to do a, vertical, a horizontal line back to the left. Now what about domain? Well, domain on this one goes everywhere from left to right, so the domain would be from negative infinity to infinity, and the range is going to be everywhere above the x-axis, which is from 0 to infinity. A couple of properties of absolute value. For all real numbers a and b, the absolute value of a times b is the same as the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. The absolute value of A over B is the absolute value of A over the absolute value of B, as long as B is not 0. The absolute value of A, of a is the same as the absolute value of negative A, and the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B will always be greater than or equal to the absolute value of A plus B. Now, we are often interested in absolute value functions of the form f of x equals the absolute value of ax plus b, which is our linear function, where the expression inside that bar is linear. We will solve equations and inequalities involving linear functions. Now, the comprehensive graph of f of x equals the absolute value of ax plus b. 
will need to include all of your intercepts and the lowest point on the V-shaped graph. Before we begin solving absolute value equations, consider the following. The absolute value of x equals 3. That's saying the absolute value of what numbers are 3? Well, the absolute value of 3 is 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. We have two solutions. Now, the absolute value of x equals negative 2 if you take the absolute value of any number, you're never going to equal a negative. Therefore, we say no solutions. And then absolute value of x equals 0. Well, the only number that the absolute value of x is going to equal 0 is just 0. So think about this. Sometimes we'll have two solutions. Sometimes we won't have a solution. And occasionally, we may end up with one solution. So to solve absolute value equations, we are going to solve for both cases. First case is take off the bars, and that's the positive case, ax plus b equals k. The second case is we're going to look at it on the negative side. So ax plus b is equal to negative k. For example, to solve the absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals 7. Now remember, absolute value means the distance from 0 on a number line. So the first case represents 2x plus 1 being 7 places from 0 on the right. The second case, 2x plus 1, is used to show the distance from 0 on the negative side, which is 2x plus 1 equals negative 7. So what we'll say is, if you have an absolute value equation, we always have two cases. First case is just like it is without the bars. Second case, change the sign on one side. So the first case, we get 2x is equal to 6, or x is equal to 3. Second case, subtract 1 from both sides, we get 2x equals negative 8, or x is equal to negative 4. Okay, what about line, uh, absolute value inequalities? If the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 5, that means the absolute value of this number, or the distance between this number and 0, has to be less than or equal to 5. So on your number line, which numbers are within 5 places of 0? Well, it's from here back, and it's also from negative 5 in this way. So if we did our interval notation, putting brackets on the endpoints, then we would have everywhere from negative 5 to 5. If we're looking at absolute value of x is greater than 2, that means we're looking for numbers whose distance from 0 is more than 2, which means we're talking numbers from here out this way, and we're talking from numbers here out this way, which in this case would be from negative infinity to negative 2, unioned with from 2 to infinity this way. Okay, now when we start doing symbols form, the absolute value of x less than or equal to 5, we're going to do, because this is less than or within 5 units of 0, then we can just set this one up like this and put x between 5 and negative 5. This one, because we're looking distance greater than 2, we're going to have two cases. First case is all x greater than 2. That's the case without the bars. The second case, we're going to change the direction of the sign and change the sign of the number. So to solve inequalities for absolute values, 
solve the compound inequality ax plus b is greater than k or less than negative k. I'll say it again. First case, just like it is without the bars. Second case, change your sign and change the sign of the number. So, the absolute value of 2x plus 1 is greater than 7. Think about it. Because it's greater than 7, the distance will be more than 7 in both directions. So, we've got 2x plus 1 is greater than 7 or 2x plus 1 is less than negative 7. Now, at this point, we don't use the bars anymore. That's what the two cases do. So minus 1 minus 1 would get 2x is greater than 6 or x is greater than 3. The other side would get 2x is less than negative 8 or x is less than negative 4. To solve absolute value inequalities of the form less than k, then we can just put the part of the absolute absolute value in between negative k and k. So to solve this one, the distance is less than 7. That means it's within 7 on both sides. So we get negative 7 is less than 2x plus 1 is less than 7. Now remember solving these, our goal is to get x in the middle. So if we subtract 1 from the middle, we subtract 1 everywhere. And if we divide by 2 in the middle, we divide by 2 everywhere. So we get negative 4 is less than x is less than 3. Okay, now inequalities involving less than or equal to or greater than or equal to are solved similarly using the equality part of the symbol as well, which this is the difference between open circles, closed circles, or brackets and parentheses on our in interval notations. So, let's run through one row. Oh, these are special cases. The absolute value of 3x plus 5 is equal to negative 5. Can you have the absolute value equaling a negative number? No, because think about it. If you plugged in any number to check it, if we plugged in 0, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5, but the absolute value of 5 is 5. Never negative 5, no solution. Can we have the distance from 0 being less than negative 5? No, no solution. Now, can we have the distance from 0 being greater than negative 5? Sure, every absolute value is going to be greater than negative 5. Actually, it's going to be greater than Zero. So in this case, we say, hey, every number you put in there and take the absolute value, we're going to be greater than negative 5. Okay, what about two absolute values? If we are trying to solve an equation of the form, absolute value equals absolute value, we're going to do exactly our same two steps. First step, just like it is with no bars. Second step, one side stays the same, and we change the sign on the other side. So if we wanted to solve the absolute value of x plus 6 equals the absolute value of 2x minus 3. First case, no bars. x plus 6 equals 2x minus 3. Second side, or second case, change the sign. Now, be careful, what a lot of people want to do is they like to just say, oh, that's 2x plus 3. But we need to change the sign on the whole side, which is actually going to give us a negative 2x plus 3. So there's the two equations we're going to solve for this equation. First case, minus x minus x, so we get 6 equals x minus 3. Add 3, add 3, so x is 9. Second case, plus 2x plus 2x, so we get 3x plus 6 equals 3, minus 6 minus 6, so 3x equals negative 3, 
So x is equal to negative 1. So in this case, we have our two solutions, 9 and 1. So let's see. to solve this on our calculator, we're going to go math, slide the number, absolute value is option number 1, x plus 6. Second side of the equation is going to be y2, which is math, slide the number, option number 1. This one's going to be 2x minus 3. And then we're going to graph, and the point where they intersect is going to be the solution. Okay, we well, notice they graph here. There's one solution, so we can go second, calculate number 5, enter, enter, enter. So there's our first solution of negative 1. That looks like the only one, but think about it. This graph is actually going to intersect out here, so what we might want to do is go zoom out just a little bit. So there's our first one going in. There's our second one. So we already know this one is negative 1, so now we're going to find this one. Second, calculate, number 5, enter, enter. Now, if they do intersect in more than one spot, on the second guess, we put our cursor on the intersection that we're trying to find, and that would give us x equals 9. How about this one? How would we solve that one on our calculator? Okay, we're going to go y equals, I'm just going to go over here and edit, x plus 5. Then we're going to come over and say plus the absolute value, so math, number, absolute value of x minus 3. And we want to find where that is equal to 16. Now remember, we're, this is left side is y1, right side is y2, and we want to find where that graph is equal to 16. So we're going to hit graph. There's the first one, there's the second one. It crosses in two places, so there are going to be two solutions. Second, calculate number five where they intersect. Enter, enter, enter. And we get the first value of x is equal to 7. Second, calculate number 5. Enter, enter. Now remember, if you're looking for more than 1, the second time through, you need to put the cursor on the point where they intersect. And we get negative 9. Now, an application. In inequality, the absolute value of x minus 48 is less than or equal to 21. Describes the range of average monthly temperatures x in degrees Fahrenheit for Spokane, Washington. Solve this inequality and interpret the result. If you want to solve it pencil paper, x minus 48 is less than or equal to 21. And in the second case, well, actually, because it's less than 21, that means it's always going to be within 21 places of zero. So we can put it in the middle, solve it between negative 21 and 21. So if we add 48 to both sides, or actually all three sides, we get 17 is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to 69. So what that means is, the average monthly temperatures is between 17 and 69. Now you're ready to complete this section of homework in my math lab.